everyone. Hopefully this works seam seamlessly on the internet. Um, happy Music Monday. We got Jack. We're, we're Jack Knife Sletta. We're here with Frank Zumo. How are you doing? I'm good. Was that your band in the intro? Yes. It's fucking rad. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Very cool. Yes. That's off our uh, our last EP, Chronicles of Jane, Volume 2. Nice one. Yeah. Uh, so you are the owner, runner, extraordinaire of Street Drum Corpse and also a uh, the drummer of Sum 41. Um, so do you want to kind of let everyone know what you got going on right now in uh, – What's been your world? What your world has been like? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously been interesting. Like all of us as musicians, just um, learning how to pivot and try new things to to stay creative and to um, keep pushing forward. That's just really been my whole mindset this entire time. And it was a perfect time to put out a solo record and really focus on that because I'm not touring with some 41. Um, so it was just a really good time to fully dive into that and also just come up with like ways to, you know, play live, um, you know, in the current state of things. So like I did two streaming events where I just wanted to give the viewers like as close to like a big arena rock show as possible instead of just doing something, you know, at home, um, you know, which is kind of what everyone's doing. So I wanted to kind of, you know, bring as much of the concert experience to people's devices as they could. So that's been really fun, just creatively building a show for the virtual world and coming up with, you know, fan experiences where doing meet and greets and Q and A's and like all these different things um, virtually now, which nothing is ever going to be doing that in person, but at least there's, you know, outlets and ways to do that now because people are obviously starving for entertainment and all that. So it's just been a creative way. And then, you know, I'm here because of, of Mel who plays in, you know, Street Drum Corps for the last couple of years. Um, you know, we got a, our whole year wiped out and then last minute we got hired back to do our Six Flags um, New Jersey show, but like a very, very stripped down version of what we normally do, which we were just grateful to, to have anything, but total polar opposite and adjustment. Like, you know, when they would attract the crowd, which drums do, they'd have to kind of stop playing and, yeah. um, you know, on peak hours, just do marching drum lines instead of like this big production we had. And um, I just found out today we got six flags in, in here in Southern California last minute, because they're going to basically have a drive through experience. So you drive your car through the theme park. Um, and I was able to pull um, drummers who literally all just lost their jobs from Disneyland um, to do that, which is amazing to lift their spirits now and have them work. So grateful that we had something come through. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, um, definitely strange times. <laughs> but yeah. pulling through, doing what you can, it's, it's the best you could do right now. Absolutely. Uh, so you just did a, a huge virtual show that you were just uh, kind of explaining, but it was full on production, video, lights, lasers, the works. Uh, where did you do it? And kind of how did you uh, get that all together? It looks amazing. And also, is it available for people to see on replay? Um, yeah, so, you know, I had done right kind of when this hit, I was booked to play a, a mental health uh, festival that was supposed to be in downtown Los Angeles at a proper theater. and. COVID hit, they said, we have to take the show virtually because mental health is at an all time risk right now with, you know, everything that's going on right now. So we're going to push forward. And I was just like, I don't want to do my solo set from home. I just, I hadn't also had my rig and everything fully dialed the way I have it now. Um, and I just, it's not the way I wanted to represent myself. And I was just like, you know, it's going to be cool to see like Chris Martin from Coldplay on the couch you don't get to see him do that he's a stadium artist like that's cool for me like how do i make something different than everybody else on the bill so i called a buddy of mine who does all the big edm uh you know productions and i just said hey man like i want to i want to make this like as close to a real show production wise like you know what are your thoughts and he goes listen come into my buddy's warehouse um 
they have all the video walls, the lighting, sound. It's just sitting there in cases because there's nobody on tour. So we literally built something in a very, you know, DIY version. And then fast forward a couple months later, now all the production companies have literally said we have these giant warehouses, world streaming, even all the big rehearsal soundstage facilities. We're going to build these as streaming places where bands can come and we can do this stuff. So they've they've pivoted. And my friends at Gallagher Staging, um, which is the big staging vendor, you know, for, for the concert industry, who I've worked with for years, all my drum risers are from them and all that. They had this facility that they partnered with all the giants in the industry, the best lighting company, video company. And they put together this place called Social Sanctuary. It's out by LAX Airport in Los Angeles. And I got approached um, by the same meet and greet company that Sum 41, when we're out on tour doing our meet and greets with fans and, and fan experiences, they've gone virtual now. And we talked about like, okay, you put out a solo record, let's put together like a rad virtual concert for your fans with all these different experiences. Um, so I was like, I wanna go to my friend's facility that literally it's like arena quality production. And I was like, guys, I wanna, you know, have my drums up in the air and I wanna have all this production and visuals and, and we were able to do it and you know we spent a lot of time really perfecting that and it was all working virtually with my team because my team is spread out all over america and we couldn't fly people out and travel and all that so um thanks to technology i was able to fire all this stuff and you know my computer you know ableton programs and just use the house crew that was there and like I didn't realize how much I missed it. Like to be in a room and hit my drums that hard and hear them in a big ass PA. And there was also um, enough crew people because it was such a big production in the room to feel like a small little venue. So it felt like a live show to me. And like the emotion, like, you know, if you if you could tell in the, in the performance, and I, like I was smiling, but like screaming at the same time because just this emotion that for nine months has been tucked away um, you know, it just made me realize how much I really do miss it and need it. And I was just fortunate to have that, you know, day to, to do that. Um, and then it was a one, you know, a one time stream for the fans. It's not something that's going to replay. I put a little recap video, like a two and a half minute recap video on my YouTube and my social media. Um, but, you know, you know, obviously if, if we can't go back to live shows anytime soon, I'm going to continue to push and, you know, try to, top that one and come up with more creative ways to, to do stuff. So now when, when everything first got locked down, um, what was your kind of your mental state at that point? Was it freaking out? Oh my God, what am I going to do? Or was it just, okay, what can I do? You know, kind of excited about trying new things or was it a mixture of both? Um, it was, I was in the airport. I was, wrapping a street drum corps convention um in vegas and that night i was going to take an overnight flight to mexico city to do our whole mexico like week or two week long some 41 tour and my manager called and he said uh take your street drum corps flight and go home don't go on your other flight to mexico he's like the festivals have been canceled like you know but your band being canadian american living all over we can't jeopardize you guys being there and then borders get stuck and you guys are stuck in Mexico. And so I was sent home and I'm a big planner. Like I'm super organized, planned. I like to have a heads up of schedules. So to literally be told like, go home. And then I've had to jump into full on dad mode, which, you know, going from touring nonstop for a year to all of a sudden, okay, now I'm home. My wife works from home anyway. She still has to work, you know, eight, nine hours a day. And I have two toddlers. It's like you're in full daddy daycare because now my kids can't go to daycare. I need to um, make it still exciting for them so they don't get stir crazy. And, and you know, with my, my oldest toddler, like keep his, you know, schoolwork up and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was a big, like complete transformation that was definitely hard. And then I you know, I was hopeful. I was like, all our shows are, got rescheduled for the fall. And then when everything got fully canceled until next year, it was like, okay, I need to find a home to put my record out. I need to get this record out, fully dive into this. And then, you know, 
I wound up getting a record deal in like early summer, and then we had planned to put out the record in, in September. And I just got so inspired. I start, and everyone's home now. Every producer, songwriter, artist. I literally wrote about twenty songs for my because I only put out an EP. I wrote like twenty songs for a full length record because I was so inspired, and everyone was home. I was you know working, um, you know, with a bunch of people, and then just like getting a home studio dialed, and then practicing again. You know, I warm up before every show and we play so many shows, but like to actually have a rig and to be able to practice again and write and record from home and send people files and whatnot. Like it's been cool to do that. And I also feel like I finally live in my home now after, you know, we've had this house for three years and I literally was gone more than not. So like it's dialed <laughs> finally to me, I feel like it's like lived in and like just missing you know pretty much a year's worth of my children's life to now be here and to have um be here to witness all these incredible milestones that i would have missed you know it's that's the silver lining in all of it and i'm just trying to stay as like healthy i'm training every day you know drumming every day because i have to stay in in tour you know tour shape at all times mm -hmm. being a drummer we're we're athletes i mean all of us as musicians are we're athletes playing the kind of music we play and the energy we put on stage so um you know all that's good but yeah of course there's hard days and it's very it's torture it's torture not being able to go out and do what we all love to do you know it's it's going on and i don't like that there's not like you know a date that we can go back and it's just this fucking unknown you know thing um but it's like you know, we really can't control that. So let's control what's in our life, you know, and let's try to come out of this as better humans. Let's work on our own self, our relationships with our families, our spouses, our loved ones, our band members. Like, let's come out of this as better humans. Let's come out of this as better artists. Like, you know, like you guys as a band should come out with the best songs of your life, you know, from this because you, you, you're not running around in the rat race of life that you normally have. You know, you're home to actually like work on your craft and take your songwriting to the next level, take your musicianship. It's like, there's no like, yo, we got to get this, this record out because you have a tour. It's like, there is, you know, you could really take your time and perfect it. So that's how I'm coping and dealing with it. Sorry for the long, you know, story on that. No, it's like as long as you need. <laughs> um, it, it's interesting that you say the word control actually, because, Right now, everyone feels like their life is out of control, just spiraling, spiraling like crazy. And what you just mentioned about taking something, even if it's something tiny, something that you can actually control to kind of set your life back on that right course, or at least feel like you're going in the right direction, that you have control over these little things and little milestones you can reach really, you know, mentally can really help out. It's the best way to be. I mean, to, to sit and be negative and bummed out about a situation that you really can't control is not healthy. It's not going to do you any good. And yes, it's, it's easier said than done. Of course, you know, we all have our good days, bad days, but I think, you know, instead of spending this time worrying about what we can't worry about, it's like, let's focus that energy on something um, positive and let's surround ourselves in a good circle with like-minded people that we can, you know, feed off each other and keep the positivity, um, you know, going. And it's just like, you know, that's, that's how I'm coping. And I've, you know, been constantly trying to go on and talk to like, you know, a lot of upcoming young musicians for the school of rocks and, you know, their, their kind of school chats and stuff and just get on there and try to just like rally and inspire, you know, some kids. Cause they, I feel like they need to hear that in these times, you know, it's like, I, you know, it's, it's different from my little, guys because they don't understand they're so young it's like as long as they have you know they're loved by us and they have their toys and their food like they're stoked and it's 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 a pretty humbling thing to go back to before we realized like the world and understood that we had to work and we needed that to pay for this or you know understanding what's going on in the world and this and that like just to see how happy they are and just full of life because it's just like they have the just basics which is like the most important things and like to see that it's 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 super inspiring and like you know i, I was like what a great I, I wrote a song about it with you know a couple songwriters because i was like 
how do we portray that? This is what the world needs more of, like just to see how the innocence of, of kids is such a magical thing because they're just so happy with just like, you know, the simplest things, you know, they don't understand all the other stuff. And it's like, at, at the same point, we kind of don't really have to right now. Why go down that rabbit hole? It's just such a negative, uh, dark thing like it is these days. It's, you know, focus on, on positivity and like just better health in, in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do want to say uh, also hello to everyone that's uh, in the chat rooms and on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. Um, if you guys do have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. And there was a question that I wanted to um, ask um, that kind of pertained to what uh, we're all talking about here, um, which is what changes would you like to see when this is kind of over and you're back to touring again? Do you, you know, be like ever since college or during college, I haven't been home since then touring and working like you know this is the first time i've ever been home for a sufficient amount of time <laughs> since then um and i do know like you know the mundane things of touring it gets rough with the traveling and you know so like is there something that like when you're back to like the full touring schedule of like what something you think like is going to change or like something that you see things changing <laughs> i mean I I think I just want it to go back to the way it is, the way shows are supposed to be perceived. It's your safe haven. You go in there and it's like no judgment. It's your, you know, your getaway, your escape. I mean, that's why I do it. And like, you know, that's, you know, my ammo that my pep talk when I talk to myself before going on stage every night, I'm just like, no one cares if you had a bad day if you're tired because you had shitty sleep because you had a rough bus ride like everyone is here to have a good time and escape reality and come into this place and you need to give it your all and play every show like it's your last show because people deserve it they're they work hard to to buy tickets and you know they're coming to have a good time so it's like you know you know, I, I don't want people to have to go back to shows and be scared now of getting sick and this and that. I want it to, to be what, you know, what it is. Um, I I mean, the only thing I, I like about this, which I wish could be like something we could in, like enforce, I think for at least a week or two weeks every year, we should just stop like this. And everybody should just have like- A siesta. Quality, quality, exactly. Family time. Like the holidays are not, quality time because you're running around to see friends, family, stressed out, this, that, like, that's not quality time. And what is it? It's two days. If that, like, I think it'd be amazing to have, um, you know, a longer, just, this is good for families to have, like, we don't have to run around and whatever, obviously not for eight or nine months with the unknown, you know, future here, but, uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. a nice week or two a year, it's a good thing. And I, I think a lot of people are realizing that and maybe they will, you know, allow for more family time and schedules and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's like we all do need to, to go grind and get back to it once once we can to make up, you know, for all this lost time and income and, and so forth and so on. Yeah, for sure. Um, another question. Um, do you like the smaller venues um, or like clubs, casinos, I guess, or fairs, or do you like more of the larger venues? This is from uh, Steve in the chat. Uh, personally, Obviously we all want to just play anything, right? We'll play everywhere right now. But absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, personally, I love big, big just arena rock shows and big festivals when you can bring all the production. Like I grew up, you know, going to Nassau Coliseum, you know, seeing all the big, big over the top, you know, rock shows. And in those days it was like, you know, going to see Motley and Ozzy and Dio and like those shows had stage sets and production for days. Like, I love that stuff. I love just the way, you know, to feel arena rock sound and all that is, is so powerful. Um, but you know, there's something special and intimate about, you know, little, club shows we we did in last spring like when our record you know when we were just about to come out we did like a small little intimate club tour and we were playing like smallest places you know we had ever been to in, in forever and we did some like little pop-up shows like we played a bowling alley bar i think in brooklyn or something mm -hmm. no barricade like 
maybe 200 kids if that and they were like falling onto the stage because of the mosh pit and no barricade and it was just like something so special i mean the band we couldn't even rock out there was no room everybody was on top of each other <laughs> you know like um but you know there's something really special about shows like that too but generally i i prefer just the big production over the top um big shows and festivals like there's nothing to greater than just like festivals and just that energy of, of seeing all the different you know bands on the bill and and all that kind of stuff it's super fun mm -hmm. um i did see you you uh filled in on a few shows with the motley crew correct yeah i was about supposed to, i was supposed to be on that stadium tour this summer which is now rescheduled right. till next summer so that was gonna be my first arena tour right, <laughs> um but That's i did see amazing. you got to fill in which is pretty pretty yeah. cool so how how was that <laughs> it was everything you could think and then mm -hmm. some you know um getting up to you know playing the band that inspired me to, to do music and that i you know grew up idolizing um to you know later in life become you know friends um you know with tommy and, and the guys and um then to all of a sudden get this frantic call to, to fly out to the east coast and you know jump in um what was great about it was he was still on the tour you know he couldn't play drums but he could play piano he could MC. so the crowd was stoked that he was still there um and then i just got to live with him on his bus for you know like two weeks and you know what a insane circus to be you know involved in and to be part of and to play those songs um you know, every night just was like, I, I, I couldn't believe it was happening or, or anything. It was just, but, and it was like the most insane gig that you could ever get because there was no rehearsal, no sound check, nothing. It was like, just walk up and you're playing a full on amphitheater um, and playing the Dr. Feelgood record from start to finish. Some of those songs I hadn't heard in years and then all the hits and then, you know, dodging production that was like blowing up behind me above me i mean it was like i didn't know when the shit was going to happen because the set list didn't say when that was happening <laughs> and on that tour all the pyro was off time on purpose to like startle you, the audience and stuff so it made it even more you know uh scary and i mean the, the loudest band loudest stage i've ever played in my life those guys are like old school where every amps on there's a PA on the stage just for monitors, in ears, and like, holy shit! It was so I'd wake up in the morning, my ears would be still ringing. You know, it was, it was loud. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any moments where you just like dropped the beat or your sticks flew in the air because pyro went off and you got scared? <laughs> no, no, thankfully, That's thankfully good. not. Um, yeah, I definitely was. You know, I definitely I blew. I blew a bottom snare head on one song. I was bending so many uh, head sticks. I bent cymbals. Like I was just hitting so hard because I was hella excited. It was just so insane. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was that was about it. Did they put you on any roller coasters or anything and not tell you? There wasn't any on that tour. Okay. <laughs> um, I did. I did uh, visit him on the. 360 coaster, and my wife and I got to ride it at Soundcheck, which was really fun and also i was just like how do you play this thing because you're going up you know sideways so your whole body is to one side and then the other side so you can't reach the other side of the kit so you have to completely alter the way you play um for the last tour he did he was riding it normal not like going around sideways so it was easier to play but still and i actually got a call um on that tour he had um his uh, like tendonitis started like really flaring up and on that tour, cause they were touring so much. Um, I got a call from their production manager and he said, you know, where are you right now? And I'm like, I'm in Singapore. I was with true drum corps. We were doing military tour. He's like, there's no way you could be here in, in time. Um, we wanted to see if you would fill And I'm like, holy crap, this is like the final tour. There's that crazy coaster. And they wound up just having Alice Cooper's drummer who was on the tour, um, you know, do double duties. Um, but you know, again, an honor to get called to, you know, fill in for, you know, one of my dearest friends and like my biggest, you know, inspirational favorite drummer of, of all time. You know, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And he um, he played with Street Drum Corps as well at some point, right? Was he's the, played uh, throughout our, yeah, he's played with us throughout our career when we've done like we had a residency in L.A., Vegas, 
that was really fun because our residencies linked up in Vegas at the same time at the Hard Rock. Um, Motley was there and we were there both in the two different rooms in the venue. Mm -hmm. So we'd go see his show. Then we were the later show. He'd play with us. And it was just so fun to, to you know, have that. And then we wake up in the morning, he'd be DJing at the pool party and we'd be hanging out there. It was just a really, really fun time. So yeah, he's, that's how I met him actually. He found out about Street Drum Court and he was a fan, which I was just like, what? Um, and we actually, um, you could look it up on YouTube. It's called Berserk. It was for Guitar Center Drum Off. Um, after I filled in for him, Guitar Center called us and said, yo, we want the two of you guys to put together an insane drum show for us for the Guitar Center Drum Off. And we literally put together like a Vegas style production show for Drum Off where we had a famous drummer from each kind of era of music come play that era's worth of music. And we had the stage set, the visuals, content from that era. Then we had dancers in costumes and dancing to those eras and so much fun. Like we had USC drumline battle stomp to open the show. And then Tommy and I came down from the wall, harnessed and playing a bunch of junk on the wall. And like we had a an MC and all these characters. I mean, it was a full, a couple semi trucks showed up, you know, it was the funnest thing to ever, you know, create and to perform with, with, you know, my buddy, um, you know, what a, what a time that was something really to actually collaborate, you know, on a show with him. And then, you know, we've collaborated in the studio on, you know, we made our actual blood drums, um, last record, um, in his studio. We tracked that whole thing in his studio. Um, so yeah, he's been, you know, involved throughout our career. Nice. We have uh, definitely not as cool as that, but we have a story about us in a, in a guitar center where we were at at NAMM. Uh, what was this, last year or two years ago? We went, to, uh, we went to the guitar center just to take a look around, and they had three drum sets set up. So the three of us sat down and just started battling and jamming. All of a sudden, the crowd just appeared, and they thought we were doing an actual show. Uh, we're, like, <laughs> we're like, is this a clinic? And we're like, no. <laughs> we're like, but we're playing a show tonight, so go to this place and go see us. That's awesome. <laughs> are they are, are, are guitar centers even open right now during this? Uh, I've been to Sam Ash. Yeah, that's okay. open. So it's I, the same thing, just wear masks and distance. I had a, I had to stop at the door, and they asked me what I wanted, and they kind of like didn't want you to touch anything, type of thing. I can't go, you couldn't go and doodle in? It's like, no. dude, it's not Amazon. It's, I go here to touch and play instruments. Uh. <laughs> yeah, like Sweetwater. Like, can I come there and just hang Where out there? and play stuff for a bit? <laughs> Sweet, Sweetwater's amazing. Um, yeah, I just went last year. It was the coolest, coolest place ever. I played there. They have a performing arts center venue there. And on my, my drum workshop tour, uh, I played there and we spent the whole day there. Like we got a full tour. I filmed a bunch of content for them because we, the signature snare drum I put out with SJC, it was a, a Sweetwater exclusive. So we did a bunch of interviews and photo shoots and all that for it. And then I did the show, hit it off with them really well. And last Christmas time we were doing uh, uh, radio Christmas shows and they own a venue there as well. It's the most beautiful theater, like the best dressing rooms and, you know, all of that. And um, we played there. And earlier that day, I went and filmed a bunch of content for them for like a couple SJC kits that they were releasing for the holidays. And they have a recording studio there. I actually tracked two songs um, for my, like when I was writing a bunch of songs at the time, I tracked two songs there, like state of the art. I mean, pro, I mean, they have a great thing going on. And what they've done for the economy there too is, is incredible. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. They bought up venues and this and that. They have an outdoor amphitheater. I mean, it's doing really good things over there. It's like musicians' playground. I was there around Christmas <laughs> last year too, and they and our uh, our reps gave us a tour, and I was like, oh my god, I want to just hang out here. And like the employees there, like they're so happy because they they have such an amazing facility. Like they have massages and like they have on-site doctors and like all this Food, like coffee pro yeah. like little venues in the dining area and literally a playground they have a giant slide yeah. that goes down from one level to the next yeah they have a slide to go yeah. down the stairs yeah. yeah so that it was like yeah that was really cool <laughs> so right. go there. i'd be going down that slide every day showing up to work I'm like okay i'm ready Woo. yeah let's go <laughs> 
a shot of espresso, go down the slide, you're ready to go for the day. <laughs> yep. so. Yeah. We um my rep saw us at a show in Indiana somewhere and then saw me somewhere and was like, you're in Jackknife Sledo. I'm going to be your rep. And he just like, you know, like you just get assigned a Sweetwater rep. And then he's like, I'm stealing you. I'm like, okay, just steal Sweetwater reps. I'm like, hey, but I'm like, it was so funny. Like, their what customer, a weird... Yeah, their customer service is the absolute uh, best. And, it really um, is. And like just, you know, how they go above and beyond. You know, you'll order like a cable and they still send you a little bag of candies, which my kids know now. So every time I open a box, they think there's gonna be candy in there. When it's Sweetwater, I gotta kind of hide it because it's like, <laughs> we don't do junk food uh, really. But uh, yeah, it's the detail. They don't mess around. They've, they've nailed it. Man, now I wanna order stuff from Sweetwater to get some candy. Just to get the candy yeah. right? oh. So speaking of uh, no junk food, what do you do normally to stay healthy on the road? And how um, does that differ from when you're home? It's the same. It, it honestly is the absolute same. I, you know, we, the technology again for the win, it's like when I'm touring in America, I literally do like Whole Foods orders to the bus or my hotel. So I can have stocked on the bus everything that I need to make. Like, I do just a lot of supplements, smoothies, um, you know, vitamins and all that. So basically, my road case for the dressing room is stocked with all that stuff. I have it stocked on the bus and even like more of like a, like a hand blender shaker for like hotel rooms, because I don't ever want to be like, there's never an excuse of like, Oh, I need to eat crap. It's like worst case scenario. I can just make a shake, have all the nutrition's, you know, especially getting off a long flight, you know, or whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's the same, you know, and I'll, I'll just order from, you know, whatever restaurants or catering just do like, you know, everything, as much vegetables and fruits, you know, and anything grilled and, you know, um, I'm really, really disciplined with that stuff. Um, you know, because I just, I need to stay as healthy as possible to, to do what I have to do. So it's like, you know, I've so many, you know, bands and crew people that are like, Oh, we, I have to eat crappy. I don't have enough money or, you know, and I'm, we're touring in a van and, and I'm just like, you could literally, buy a big jug of protein powder and a little, you know, shake thing, blender, it's going to save you money and you're going to eat healthy. And like when I was on a workshop tour, we had a, um, a young photographer, videographer out with us. And I had the same talk with him. He hit me up months later. He's like, dude, this changed my life. Like, I feel so good. I'm saving money. I'm just making shakes. And like, you know, I'll go to the, you know, Walmart and just get, you know, stock up on the things that I need for, you know, to make shakes and, you know, bars and, and whatnot. And it's like, you know, there's no excuse why you, you have to eat bad on the road. That's just an, that's just an excuse. It's not, you know, needed if you want to be healthy and, and have that lifestyle, you know? Mm hmm and what about we exercise? Yeah, we eat a lot of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah, two of us are vegetarian, and two of us can't have gluten and, uh, and dairy and all that. So that's we're left with eggs. It's protein and <laughs> better than fast food. So. Oh, and it's Open late at night, you know, you have like Waffle House or whatever's open late. And get some eggs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> better than Taco Bell and that. But uh, yeah. what about exercise too? I mean, I know you've posted, I've seen some videos you posted of like training uh, on the road. You, you posted something, you were like on the beach, you're doing like boxing stuff. And yeah, I mean, active. I'll, you know, the, all the different coaches that I consult with, I'll say, you know, my boxing coach or, you know, this coach, whatever, I'll say, yo, this is where I'm going on tour. Let me know if there's any gyms or coaches that you recommend in the cities. And they've linked me with a lot of coaches just so I can get out of my, normal routine and get pushed and train with somebody so that's been that's been really cool and then honestly in my dressing room i have a mat a kettlebell um two dumbbells and jump rope and you could do so much stuff so i will train every day like light stuff like that and then i have a practice kit um in the dressing room so my whole warm-up routine is like an hour and a half to two hours before the show i ice in like freezing of giant bucket, just like arms, wrists, everything. I ice for a couple minutes, stretch, um, you know, get on the, get on the kit. And then after the show, same thing, ice, uh, stretch, warm down. Like I'm, and then I go on the bus and I make like a loaded shake 
um, because I can't, you know, we, you know, you get, by the time you get back to the bus after show, you, you know, you guys know it's late. I'm not going to eat some big heavy meal and then go to sleep and have it sitting on my stomach. So I'll, I'm blowed up on a great shake. And then just literally I'm in my bunk reading. It's super boring. And, but it's like, that's, you know, how I need to, you know, do this. You know, I back in, you know, in the earlier days of touring, especially being a Motley crew, you know, I rage and got that, that side out, but it's like, you know, the amount of shows that some 41 plays and how fast we play and that kind of intensity, it's like, I can't mess around. Um, and I want to do this as long as I can and be as healthy. So, you know, I'm really disciplined, even, even off the road now, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm running the canyons or boxing or, you know, home workouts, um, you know, some coaches, I'll train with them at their home gyms um, or some of the gyms have opened up now where it's like in the parking lot um, mm -hmm. stuff. And then, you know, the thing that really changed my life was pool training, um, learning how to like everything you do on land, you do underwater in the pool, which is what I did in my uh, music video for my solo single. I Because I was so inspired by all of that and it's taught me so much about breath work and breathing and all that. I literally drowned my kit at the bottom of, of Laird Hamilton's pool and play drums under his pool, which was the scariest thing ever. I didn't even know if it was going to work because our drums going to float or they're going to sink. And like, you know, it was, and we didn't have time to practice it. We kind of just showed up and I went there like 30 minutes before call time and me and my tech just like threw my drums in the pool. And like, they actually, they didn't sink except for the kick drum, but the kick drum sank flat. So you can't play it. So we had to take all the heads off. We put mesh heads on them so water can get through and we put weights inside. So then the whole kit sank and then I was floating up. So I literally had to put a weight belt on or harness my one of my feet under a, uh, a dumbbell. And the camera crew was like swimming above me with snorkels. And then they dived down sometimes to get certain shots that they needed to get deeper. And then it was like dope. We were just like, you know, I'd fall into the pool and we'd have drums to like emulate what the, the album cover looked like and stuff like that. But what a challenge, like a scary thing, but it's such a, you know, that, that it worked, I was able to do it. And like, it changed my life with breathing, like learning all this breath work and, you know, it's expanding my lung capacity with doing this stuff and not being able to breathe underwater and hold your breath for, you know, a minute or whatever it may be like, and it's so much healthier for you to your body too, because you can be super explosive and you're not going to hurt yourself because the water helps you with all that. So it's been fun. I'm just constantly on a quest learning like new techniques and new training. Like that's what I geek out on, um, you know, is, is stuff like that. I just hang and consult with a lot of athletes um, because they've taught me so much, you know, with just, um, you know, bettering just, every, you know, all this just comes into play with, with drumming. Yeah. And it absolutely, you know, increases your longevity of being a drummer, being a touring artist. Once you, yeah. once you're sick and once you're, you know, not healthy anymore, you can't keep doing this every day. You know, people ask us all the time, Oh, what's your, what's your craziest tour story? Or, you know, Oh, you guys party like crazy every night. It's like, no, we, we go have something no. to eat. We go to sleep. <laughs> like we, yeah. we go cry. <laughs> yeah. We go to the truck stop and go sleep in our van or whatever. But you know, it's like, we have yes. to go play a show the next day. We, we can't go out and party all night. We won't be able to play the next day. The show's the party. And if it's not enough for you, yeah. you probably shouldn't be doing it. If, if, if it needs to be, you know, or some people like, Oh, the, I, you know, the high from the show is so good. Like I need to keep it going. It's like, no, you don't do it the next show. Like I'm, I'm done after a show. Like I, because I leave it all on that stage. Like, yes, you have the adrenaline after, but when I finally crash, it's like, I'm, I'm done. Like I, so many times on the bus and stuff, I don't even dream. I just, I'm like in a coma. It's just out. It's, it's such a good, you know, exhausting feeling. And like, and I actually get sleep on the road um, versus home with having, you know, two, you know, young kids and, and, and all that, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm on vacation when I go on tour now because, <laughs> so I, you know, I'm not getting interrupted sleep, you know, with the kids coming to the bed or, or whatnot. So, um, you know, but sleep is honestly, you could be as healthy and go to the gym every day, but if you don't get proper sleep, all that's out the window, it, the health and everything starts with sleep. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people do have trouble with sleeping and whatnot. And like, you know, there's been really good, you know, organic and clean, you know, CBD products now that help with that. 
um, which is, you know, I've gone into that rabbit hole of CBD stuff too, for just like inflammations and aches and pains, you know, topical stuff, uh, pill form, um, you know, and I'll, I'll have some of that stuff before sleep too, um, just to get, you know, even better sleep. Um, so that stuff's been working. Like a lot of drummer friends turned me on to that stuff. They were like, this changed my life, CBD, you know, oils and creams and whatnot for, you know, different inflammations and issues I was having. So I tried it and like, there's so much out and it's, there's so much BS, you know, kinds too. It's like, I had to really find a good, clean, organic company that was making, you know, a real product, not just like, you know, you can buy them on Amazon now. It's like, what? It's just like, where is this coming from? What is this? You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> and it has to be like full spectrum and, and all that. Um, definitely those, uh, the topical creams help so much. Roxy and I are always putting it like on our necks before we play. It just, it kind of like numbs it a little bit and just helps you be able to move better when you're on stage. Absolutely. If you're, you know, cramping up or you slept weird the night before or anything or Totally. It helps a lot. So um, have there been a lot of new technology types of things that you've bought, you know, like interfaces or, you know, things like that, that you didn't really dabble with before that now you're getting into with all these live streams? Absolutely. And stuff? Yeah. I mean, because of uh, live streaming, because of playing live for playback and whatnot, like I wanted to build a rig that I can have for the studio and for, um, for live playback. So it could kind of work for both applications. Um, and then, you know, at home, I never had a proper, um, like rig. I'd have just an acoustic kit with like mesh heads and like, you know, some dead cymbals. But then once I put on headphones and practice, like I couldn't hear the drums, So it really wasn't inspiring. Um, so I literally put together a hybrid, um, acoustic electronic kit where I, I took my acoustic drums. I had like a very small SJC, like jazz size kit put mesh heads, triggers on them, rolling V drum cymbals, and I'm firing all my samples. And I have everything going through a mixer. And then I'm, um, so when I'm playing along, like I'm hearing my drums, everything. And then I can take a MIDI out to record, you know, all the drums as MIDI or audio out. Um, even on tour, you know, on, on the last some 41 cycle, I bought like a little mobile backstage rig that's in my case backstage where i can have a midi little keyboard a little like native instruments you know sample kind of pad a drum on um ableton and you know i was making you know tom and i actually made all the music for a friend's podcast when we were on the road like we just had a little backstage rig and um you know so that's been cool to like get all this stuff dialed and like doing this fan you know experience thing like we literally you know, we played the live stream concert and then I gave them a tour of like my home studio. And then we did like a, a live Q and A and, you know, it was cool to like have everything set up to do streaming properly. And even for writing sessions, I've been writing with people, you know, all over the country. And, um, you know, there's app now called audio movers where with that app, I can hear their direct like pro tools sound, not just like their, you know, computer mic picking up their studio monitors like so i could really hear what's going on with the mix and sonically so it's been cool learning all that stuff and and you know pivoting um you know in these times and just having like a but it's like crazy i literally had to i did all this and then like i couldn't even stream because my internet wasn't good enough because i live up in a canyon so i had to like <laughs> switch companies and do all this stuff to get it dialed because it's like it's a new norm now. And I was watching back interviews on zoom and I'm like, these are too glitchy. Like this isn't acceptable. So I literally had to like change providers and get crazy internet. And it's funny just because of where I live, it's just being up in the Canyon. It's, it's a little bit more difficult um, here. Mm -hmm. but, you know. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of the, uh, you know, like late shows and all these big interviews and stuff like that. But they're like, now we can see what actors and all these big musicians, like who doesn't have good internet, you know? Oh yeah. And you'll hear Howard Stern will be ripping on. Like, I think it was like Chris Rock. He's like, your internet is the worst. How do you not have somebody to call your Chris Rock? And he's like, just do where I live. I don't, I can't get it like where I am or whatever. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's <laughs> hopefully over sooner than later. Cause this has gone on too damn long. Um, you know, and what a, what a crippling thing to our industry, venues, musicians, crew, um, you know, everything. I mean, at least venues are being, you know, used now for streaming and stuff. Like it was great to, you know, with our blood drums show, we um, got approached to do a streaming thing, which we've never done before. Um, I was all for it, but I'm like, it's gotta be 
epic. You know, we got to make this represent what the Blood Drum show is. And we've never done something like in, in an intimate club, small theater, um, but it's got to be filmed the right way to, to really show the energy of it. So, you know, we put a lot of work into that and it was cool to just put those people to work, the venue for the day, the crew and, and, you know, and to put something out like that for the Blood Drums fans, because they didn't have the traditional Blood Drum show across, you know, America and we even Canada one year. Um, so, you know, it's just trying, people still are not understanding fully what live streaming, what all this even is because, you know, I've literally had to make the simplest, you know, especially with language barriers and things around the world too. I've had to really make it very simple for people to understand. Like some people were like, oh, I live in the Czech Republic. I can't come to your live stream. I was like, you can, it's a live stream. That's, it's worldwide. And you know, I'd explain because not everyone, or they think it's free. It's, oh, it's on Instagram live. It's free because everyone's doing free stuff. It's like, no, it's an actual, you know, you have to charge because it costs money to go into these, you know, production places and have the crew and to, to rent that video wall and lighting rig. It's not just like free. Those guys have to pay their bills and sustain too. So it's just helping everybody out. But I also wanted to tie in a charity element. So um, I tied mental health into it. I worked with my buddy's organization and we donated, you know, half of each ticket sale to his um, organization to help mental health and all that. So it was cool to bring that element, you know, into this as, uh, as well. That's great. Yeah, when we um, when we did that Blood Drums live stream, when the three of us walked into Arlene's grocery, you don't realize how much you take for granted until you miss it. I mean, just opening, just opening that, opening that, opening that door. Oh my God, I forgot what venues look like. And we're looking at this. Oh my God, a stage. Oh my God. Oh my God, a sound booth. <laughs> you yeah. know, all these things that you just haven't seen in months that were so typical you know you saw it every day and now it was so exciting again yeah it's it really is and i'm, I'm so glad we we got to do that and that, that you guys got to do that to at least play the real show and and that was another thing i was like venues aren't going to let us shoot grinders we we you know in venues that small and they were like no you're clear to do it i was like amazing i mean we've back in the day when we first started we used to not tell people and we would just do it and I can't tell you how many times a fire marshal would just unplug it from the wall. Um, we would get, you know, I mean, we opened our Vegas residency, we did it. And there's like, there was an iconic photo in the hard rock of Adrian from no doubt in like a banana hammock tuxedo thing he was wearing with clown makeup. He's on one side of our washing machine and Adam's blasting him with sparks. But our production manager got screamed at, and we're like, dude, this is Vegas. You have pyrotechnics in the mall. Like what? Um, but because it was a smaller venue. Um, so, you know, and obviously, you know, we've had to adjust all that with insurance and whatever. But back in the day, that's seeing that with you guys. It made me think back to the old days when we used to just kind of just say, F it, let's just go for it. And, you know, whatever. Obviously, we were always safe and not trying to light things on fire, but it was part of our show that was that was like our wow you know moment in the show always mm -hmm. yeah apologize later <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. don't um, ask permission know, just apologize after. <laughs> yeah i know you gotta get going soon so i just want to say um hello to everyone again in the chat rooms and if there's any last minute questions to uh get them in now um oh, but we got some sdc family on here i see rob jackson uh, Matt Miranda. So what's up, SDC family? Thanks for everybody tuning in. Um, and hopefully yes. we're still Oh, Matt Miranda will actually be on here December 14th. Awesome. He's going to be leading the show at, uh, at, at Six Flags here for us for the holidays. Sweet. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, moving, uh, we like to ask everyone on here, like at the end, like kind of if you have a positive note to leave on for maybe younger up and coming artists, musicians, or even like the audience that's waiting to see bands or whatever, what kind of like you think, you know, you should do in the meantime, or kind of just like a, a little positive note to, to kind of leave out on, to put you on the spot. 
Oh, wait. Sorry. Chris yelled at us. Hey, Chris, I didn't see you on there. We can give Chris a I'll shout just, out. I'll put, hey, what about us. me? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I would say, you know, like I, I, I kind of touched on a little a bit little earlier. Bit, yeah. um, you know, use this time to take your craft, whatever it may be, to the next level, to work on relationships with family, friends, loved ones. Like, you know, let's come out of this as just as better, better people, um, better artists, better, you know, whatever we, we may be as, as our craft. Um, and, you know, for the fans, like hang in there, um, support, you know, any bands that are doing streams, if you can, or, the, you know, merch, even buying their music on digital platforms, um, even, you know, going to, you know, helping venues and, and things like that, if you can, like, you know, and even, you know, standing up for venues and going to government and saying like, you know, these venues need help. This is contributes so much to the industry. You know, it's like, you know, use your voice, try to help and support where you can. And, um, you know, like drive-in shows are cool. They've come out with a cool way to do that, you know, now and for EDM events and, and, you know, band shows and, and whatnot. It's like support whatever shows come through, you know, stream stuff's getting great. You're seeing, you know, mega artists going into mega venues and doing really cool stuff. So, um, and they're all like the price the same. It's like 10 bucks to watch something rad. Obviously it's never going to be going to a show, but at least you're seeing a production and something exciting. Um, and you know, they're offering all these cool packages and experiences for you to like hang out with some of your favorite artists virtually. Now it's pretty, pretty cool how that's, happening you're seeing artists like Corey taylor doing that he's getting on virtual you know meet and greets and stuff too and hanging you know and people you know are going to spend i think more time now and it's going to be really more genuine now than like you know when it was when we we're doing shows everything was so quick and shuffled in so fast it's like we do have time now you could really you know ask your artists more you know questions and, and whatnot and then like you know just put up great content any content you put up Everyone wants to get content out so quick. Just have this conversation with yourself before you hit like upload and say, I'm putting this up right now. If my dream artist, record label, management, whatever it was, was going to see this, does it represent us to the fullest? And just make sure anything you put out there is always represents you because we live in a world now where people are getting gigs, record deals, this and that by their videos it's really important and build your online community really you know interact with your fans comment with your fans you know chat with your fans like what you guys are doing right now and pivoting and time doing this this is great you're not just sitting around being burned out waiting to get a call that you can go back on tour it's like okay let's keep things going let's bring our friends on like so you know mad respect to you ladies for doing something like that because this is like really important in time and like you know it's important for us as artists to go on these platforms and talk to you like you know i'm all about talking to everybody in these times you know wh whoever it may be because it's like you know i i don't think i'm any different than anybody else and it's like i'm you know i'll talk to anybody and i think it's important to get the message out wherever we can in any any platform you know given in these times and like you know positivity uh we need it so put some kindness out into the world for sure yeah and speaking of which um been meaning to tell you i have gotten so many com uh, comments about you at six flags and other places of anyone who has spoken to you saying you were the most down-to-earth famous person they have ever spoken to <laughs> and you really are like I you i don't that, that's that's really sweet to hear and i don't you know you know i'm you know, just like you guys, I grew up in Long Island, you know, and, and I don't, you know, I don't, I still see myself in my eyes as that kid playing in my parents' basement. I, I, I don't, you know, it's, I don't get wrapped up in, you know, in the, you know, Hollywoodness of, of all this. That's why I can enjoy living here, not having the real street smarts growing up real, you know, everybody's real, you know, like in, in New York, my friends will call me out in a second, my family, and you know, to have that stability has been a really important thing um, in my life. But it's like, you know, 
that's why I go out and, you know, the most important thing I feel is like going out and doing these workshops for these kids and inspiring kids. Like I try to do at least one or two a year. And I thank God I got one in right before COVID hit. Literally I was out and we take, you know, we go to rad venues, skate parks, coffee shops, record shop, make these rad place for kids to come to. We let kid musicians have the stage open for us. Young upcoming bands. I get up there, I'll play a mashups, medleys of stuff throughout my career hang do q a give away cool stuff um do a long meet and greet and then actually perform with the art you know the upcoming artists like i've got on morning big new shows with the upcoming drummer you know who's a little kid you know and it's like it's it's really important when when i have this many eyes on me to do something positive and give back and i just want to inspire because i didn't have this stuff coming up you know everything was just like such a big dream you know and then when i would go to drum clinics they were just like it was rad to see these drummers that I idolized, but it was in like the most stale venue. They just went up there, played every lick they knew. They talked about technical shit and they were gone. You know, we wanted to change that game and make it a really fun place for kids and like just this community and all that. So, um, you know, it's just uh, never forget where you came from. Just stay real and just surround yourself with people that are going to keep it in check and not, you know, the phony baloney part of the music business that, um, I laugh at, you know, so it's like, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for being so humble and, and so inspiring and um, inspiring us to all work harder and be better. And um, on that note, where can we find all of your, where can everyone in the chat find all of your, your merch, your, your oh, music? Yeah. My, um, my solo record came out in September. It's called It's My War. It's on everything digital that you get your digital music. Um, and uh merch is through go circus um apparel um which i didn't want to go through a traditional merch company i wanted to make like rad quality really good merch so i collaborated with a really boutique amazing designer who makes all my personal clothes for me um and the blood drums and street drum corps costumes and even your guys new face masks and whatnot um yeah. but uh you know so that's that stuff's cool. And then I'm just, you can find me on all the socials under my name and, and whatnot. Um, and then, yeah, some 41, obviously that's everywhere as well. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm a huge, uh, some 41 fan. Um, so I'm really glad I got to, we got to virtually meet you, but hopefully we all get to see you oh, one day, but in New York, uh, please hit me up and you guys come out and hang for sure. For sure. I was going to say, actually, oh. um, one of the one show I went to was at the crazy donkey in that was here in long island I play there in my cover band back when i was the cover that's what i did out of high school i was in cover bands tore up and down the east coast and we used to play there all the time yeah it was like the night before i went to see anti-flag bouncing souls and then yeah. the next night was some 41 and i got destroyed by the audience at some 41 show and i was like i was more worried about the anti-flag bouncing like <laughs> that was pretty brutal we played uh <laughs> We played the Paramount in Huntington. That's an amazing venue too. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really rad to play. Um, you know, to to be that's really close to you know where my family's from. So that was really cool to to do that. And then obviously every time we play New York's the best. We played Hammerstein Ballroom last fall, um, and I Street Drum Corps played two nights there when we started on our first big tour. We played there two nights in a row with uh, the Used, Thirty Seconds to Mars, H Two O, and Glassjaw. What a night. That's a great bill. Yeah, we did two nights in a row, sold out. <laughs> um, and uh, I hadn't been there since. So to, to play there last year was was amazing to, to, to be there. Um, yeah, it's always fun playing in New York um, on any tour. So, so hopefully soon, back at it. Yeah, hopefully we uh, yeah. get to all be back in a, either on the stage or in the audience and just uh, get back being sweaty out there together, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank well, you so for, much uh, yeah thanks for having me have a have a good good week and uh yeah send me send me um send me your ep links because that was rad what i heard on the intro so whatever record that's on sentencing that was awesome thank, thank you. you will do yeah awesome. we have uh two eps out now on uh blackheart records oh, and, uh, and we got uh, a new album done so uh hopefully uh next year we can uh, get it out there to the to the world <laughs> right. um awesome well kick ass and uh 
you know, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Right, and thank, thank you, you everyone. See you guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.